Well, with, with, with the storm, we won't, we won't be able to check out the island just yet. Oh, yeah, that, that seems to be a lot of interruptions going on in my life of late. Oh, and here I was hoping to see it get worked on today. I was wanting to plant a garden and everything. <sighs> it's so cold. I could do for a nice hot cup of tea. Wink, wink. Well, that's a good idea. Hey, come with me. I, in the meantime, I can respond to this letter I just got, asking me about the secrets of making repeatable tile textures. Why were we not down here when the storm... So today I'm going to be using Clipping Studio to do this. Okay, the rant is starting. Now you can use Photoshop if you like, but I like my tools. And when we are done, we can drag and drop it into Blender and we can take a look at it and I will show you the process in making these things, yes. And I think the easiest example here is going to be uh, the fence from last time. Hmm... Well, you may be lousy at herbalism, but you sure know how to make a good cup of tea. So over here in Clipping Studio, I'm going to create a brand new project. For today's texture, I think I'm going to make it a 128 by 128. And then I'm going to give it a name, and yeah, we're all set to start painting. Now for making a tile texture, we it is very important to make sure that both far ends of the texture are exactly the same. So that way they will at least uh, tile without any lines or seams. Luckily today I'm just making a simple fence so it won't be that hard. Uh, with me so far? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, sure thing. Good. Now the true sorcery. So from here, I'm just gonna make a new layer. Select a brown color for my color picker and just start drawing lines. Now, this is an old style fence, so I don't have to really worry about making lines straight or anything. I'm not worried about detail either. Uh, I'll, I'll do that later. Right now, I just wanna focus on forming the basic silhouette of my fence. Then after I'm done, I'll center it a bit and uh, yeah, that's a good start. Uh, on second thought, you know what? Actually, I, I, I wanna get rid of these ends here and just make a straight line. I'll also duplicate it and drag it over here to the other side. Uh, this means it'll have to recenter my my fence and whatnot and erase what I don't need, but eh. nice. Okay, yeah. yeah, I like that. Okay, now I'll just collapse everything into one image for convenience sake. Hold on. Wouldn't it be better to just leave it all as separate images? No, not for what I'm going to use it for. When I go to use the lasso tool to clean things up, it, it's going to be a great boon. It, it, you, you, you'll see when I get there. Now, my little cult initiates, I'd like to work on some depth. What? Alright, so I'll just make me another layer over here, and then place it right underneath the plank one right here. This will act as a support plank for the entire thing. Let's go ahead and make it even so that there are no issues when tiling. And you know what, I think I'd like it to overlap a bit over the other plank, so let me just duplicate it, move it up to the top, and then erase the parts that I just don't want. Okay, I duplicate it again, and then move it down, and then of course I repeat the steps all over again. Nice! Okay, then I duplicate it once again, and then drag it over to the, to the edges, far left and far right. Now that way it'll tile real nicely. Okay, now let's work on some of the depth that the planks will need. I'll make a new layer underneath my plank base here, and then I'll pick some random dark brown color and just start painting. It's real simple. And there's no real need to get all complicated with this part. I, I could just duplicate the layers and, and darken it in retrospect, but, but you know, sometimes you just feel like painting. And also, it's a good way to get some shape variation if that's what you want. And then I made a new layer and did the exact same thing for the supports up top and bottom. 
All right, well, now it's time to work on some of the nails and just pin this thing together. Uh, let's see. Since my pixel resolution isn't exactly high to begin with, uh, I'll just have to imply as much as I can. So I'll just make a new folder and put everything that I've done thus far up in it. And then I'll just make a new layer and start working on my nail. So I, for this part, I pretty much just experimented with drawing the light side first and then duplicating it and then moved it underneath the first one and then just made it darker. And then instead of, you know, just sizing the darn thing up, I just decided to duplicate it even more and scatter it about. And when I got the sh general shape that I wanted, I collapsed pretty much, I collapsed it all and then I was done. Mm, but, let's see. oh wait, no, wait, I'm not done. Uh, oh yeah, uh, let me just take this airbrush here and then I'll just draw on my highlight. Mm, yes, perfect. All right, now I'll just simply just duplicate this thing around and place it wherever I need. Scatter them here, 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 and of course everywhere else. And there you go. That part is done. That is a nail. Okay, next we're on to highlights. Going back to the folder up here, I make a new layer. I'm going to just select a tan color, and then I'm just going to paint the edges like so. Then, yet, then at the end, I just collapse most of what I have that was in the folder. And that, that's pretty good. Simple, easy, effective. The shadows were done in a, in a pretty similar way. The only real difference here is that I changed the blend type to hard light uh, because at the end I just decided I was unhappy with the uh, shade that I chose. Uh, but if you notice that after I did this, everything it, it's pretty dirty. I have some bleed over from my brush and it doesn't look quite as nice and clean as I want it to be. To clean up both my shadows and the highlights, most of the shadows, I selected the fence texture and then I used the lasso tool. And then I selected my shadow layer and hit the delete button. And this cleaned up everything real nice. Ah, yes, now it's time for the section I'm pretty sure all of you were waiting to see. We need to make ourselves some wood grain. Now, it would be very simple just to take a picture and then just overlay it over my entire thing, and we could just call it a day. However, I'm thinking I want to do something a bit more artistic, something a bit more interesting. So I'm just going to paint it. The wood grain itself is relatively easy to do. I selected a darker shade of brown and with a slight hint of red to it and then just drew on them. A bunch of lines, squiggly circles, and jagged edges, you know the drill. Once I was done with that, I then duplicated it. I then changed the hue to make it a lighter color, like so, and then placed it underneath the darker one, moved it to the side a bit, and that was that. After that, I cleaned up my canvas like I did before using the lasso tool, and as far as the wood grain was concerned, that was that. Uh, now that we're reaching the end here, I think it's time that we start to make our texture look a bit, uh, look a bit pretty. Here we are in the final stretch, so I think we're gonna keep this short. This bitch, I wanted to add some uh, hue variation to my planks to make them pop out a bit, you know, just make them a bit more interesting to look at. And then, so I just pretty much just sloppily painted on three different shades of brown, starting with a, a light tan color, ending in a darker shade. I don't really care too much if it looks good right now, as long as it tiles properly, it doesn't really matter. Once I was done, I changed the blend mode to overlay, and then, yeah, that, that looked pretty good. I just left it there. And then, of course, I cleaned up everything again with the lasso tool. It's a very useful tool. Okay, so are you going to add grass to it? I think it would look really nice if you did. Oh yeah, grass. I forgot about the grass, thank you. Thanks for the reminder. Uh, so to make my grass, for this I just made a new layer, then selected a green color, and then I used just a normal pen tool and made random strokes to make tufts of grass. Subtle and easy is the best way to think about this, I believe. After that, I went to my favorite brush tool, which is, of course, the airbrush, and then I drew some subtle shadows and highlights to create the illusion that they are made. this thing is made of multiple blades of grass. Here you can go as simple or as complex as you want. I chose to be slightly more simple. Then, once I was done, I trimmed up the bottom here using the eraser tool, and then I just created an outline. <laughs> it's a good thing I did too, because I just I just noticed that I have some stray brush strokes here and there that I need to erase. Okay, let me just make some adjustments and get rid of the uh, unwanted bits over here. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, good. Uh, lastly, let's make some of the grass stand out just a little bit more. So I'm just going to use my airbrush tool here and uh, just paint away. Adjust the opacity, and uh, let, let's see. Blend mode, what, what, what do I want? Hmm, no, no blend mode. 
Okay, that's good. Uh, let me just clean things up here a bit. I'll just uh, put it here in this folder, move it down. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, next let's just drop it into Blender and let's just see what happens. Okay, over here in Blender, I'm just gonna create a new material, like right here. And then I'm going to go over here to my Materials tab, hit Control A, and then I'm gonna bring in an image, put color to color, and since we have transparencies, alpha to alpha, I'm gonna change the linear to close this real fast so it's all pixelated right here in Blender. And I'm just gonna open it up. Okay, I'm over here in uh, solid mode, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here, change a few settings to flat and then texture so I can see it, and mm, looks real nice, but let's see if it actually tiles properly. I'm gonna go into edit real fast and just scale it on the x-axis to scale it up a bit. And then I'm gonna go over here in my UV tab, hit A to select everything, and scale it, and let's see. Oh look, it looks real nice, but wait, 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 wait. Beautiful, there is a slight error. Okay, so let's see if we can not fix this real fast. It shouldn't be that bad. Popping back over to my project, I'm just going to duplicate all my files, hide this one, collapse this down, and then I'm going to copy and duplicate it again. And then I'm just going to flip it horizontally, and then I'm just gonna pick a side, whichever side I want, to erase. And I think it's, I'm going to erase everything on this side. Okay, and there's a little bit of a weirdness right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtly erase just a little bit of things right here. Doesn't have to be perfect if you don't want it to be. If you want it to be, you can put a little, a little bit more effort into it. But for the most part, cool. Let's see. Hold on. Let's look at the example. Let me just get rid of this down here. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to very good. All right. Save this and let's see if it tiles. Going back over to Blender, I am now going to reload it. And voila. And bada bing, bada boom, it tiles. Now you can make this look a little bit better if you want, but just as a quick note of how to fix things, that's pretty much what you can do. And you can make whatever adjustments you want to this other side, maybe like flip it or whatever. But in a nutshell, if you have, if you have any issues, that's more or less how you'd fix it. Not looking half bad, I like it. There you go. I do hope this was very enlightening. Yeah, sure, but are you making a game or something? I don't understand what this has to do with my island. <laughs> uh, yes. But once I think the storm is done, I, I think we should just go ahead and get to work on the island again. Uh, I, I think we've waited long enough. Do you think the chaos will calm enough to permit time? Ugh, I'll just make time. Oh, what about that podcast thing? How goes the progress on that? Well, I think we're getting closer to starting it. There are still some things that need to be done, but most of the big stuff is done. Mostly I'm working on the artwork, and you know, that's taking a bit of time, but you know, I, I think for the most part, we're almost done.